Thank you, Mr. Martin Stein, for finding. We shall begin with today's participants. All of the participants, please move to the breakout room where you will be told to move back in here when it is your chance. Thank you. The first participant for today will arrive shortly. Participant TES1101 will arrive shortly. Thank you. performer has arrived. Participant TES1101, please switch on your microphone and camera. All the best, you may proceed. I'll be doing an extract from the movie, The Accused, released in 1988. In this scene, the lawyer of a raped victim is speaking to the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paulson has told you that the testimony of Sarah Tobias is nothing. Sarah Tobias was raped, but that is nothing. She was cut and bruised and terrorized, but that is nothing. All of it happened in front of a howling crowd. But that is nothing. Well, it may be nothing to Mr. Paulson, but it's not nothing to Sarah Tobias. And I don't believe it's nothing to you. Next. Mr. Paulson tried to convince you that Sarah Tobias, that Kenneth Joyce was the only person in that room who knew that Sarah Tobias was being raped, the only one. Now you watch Kenneth Joyce. How did he strike you? Did he seem specially sensitive? especially observant? Was he so remarkable that you immediately said to yourself, of course, this man would notice things other people wouldn't. Do you believe that Kenneth Joyce 
saw something in that room that those other three men didn't see. All the time, Sarah Tobias was being pinned on the pinball machine. Do you believe that no one else saw? Kenneth Joyce confessed to you that he watched a rave and did nothing. He said that every single person in that room behaved badly and he was right. But no matter how immoral it is, it is not a crime of criminal solicitation to silently watch a rape. It is not a crime of criminal solicitation to walk away from rape. But it is a crime of criminal solicitation to induce or entreat or persuade or commit someone to commit a rape. Pin her down, stick it into her, make her move. These three men did worse than nothing. They clapped and they cheered and they rooted the others on and made sure that Sarah Tobias was raped and raped and raped. Now tell me, is that Nothing. Thank you, performer, for your performance. The performance is greatly appreciated. Please proceed to the breakout room. Performer number TES1102 will be arriving shortly. Former, uh, you may proceed. All the best. Please mention which play, uh, which movie, and the character you're reading for. Thank you. Okay. Um, I shall be playing Azula from the Avatar The Last Step in the series. All right, here. It's time to face your doom. What a shame. You always had such beautiful hair. What are you doing here? I didn't want to miss my own daughter's coronation. <laughs> Don't pretend to act proud. I know what you really think of me. You think I'm a monster. I think you're confused. All your life, you've used fear to control people. Even your friends, May and Tai Lee. <gasps> well, what other option do I have? Trust is for fools. Fear is the only reliable way. Even you fear me. No. I love you, Azula. I do. Thank you, performer, for your performance. It is greatly appreciated. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performer number TES1704 will be arriving shortly. I repeat, TES1704. Participant number TES.
Performance 1704 has arrived. Please switch on your camera. Performer TES1102, please read the meeting. Can I start? Yes, you may proceed. All the best. Thank you. Good afternoon. I will be doing an extract from the movie Time to Kill, and I will be doing the closing statement uh, from the defense lawyer, Jake Briggins. I had a great summation all worked out. We we'll have some sharp lawyering, but I'm not gonna read it. I'm here to apologize. I am young and I am inexperienced, but you cannot hold Carl Lee Haley responsible for my shortcomings. Do you see in all this legal maneuvering, something has gotten lost and that something is the truth. Now it is incumbent upon us lawyers not to just talk about the truth, but to actually seek it, to find it, to live it. Let's take Dr. Haley, Dr. Bass, for example. Now, obviously I would never put a convicted felon knowingly on the stand. I hope you can believe that, but, but what is the truth? That, that he's a disgraced liar? What if I told you that the woman he was accused of raping was 17, he was 23, and that she later became his wife, bore his child, and is still married to the man today? Does that make his testimony more or less true? What is it in us that seeks the truth? Is it our minds or is it our hearts? I set out to prove that a black man could receive a fair trial in the South, that we're all equal in the face of the law, but, but that's not the truth. Because the eyes of the law humanized yours and mine and until we can see each other as equals, justice is never gonna be served even handed. It's gonna be nothing more than a reflection of our own prejudices. So until that day, we have a duty under God to seek the truth, not with our eyes and not with our minds where fear and hate turn commonality into prejudice, but with our hearts but we don't know better. I wanna tell you a story. I want you all to close your eyes when I tell you this story. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to yourselves. Go ahead, close your eyes, please. This is a story about a little girl walking home from the grocery store one sunny afternoon. I want you to picture this little girl. Suddenly a truck races up and two men jump out and grab her. They take her to a nearby field and they tie her up. And they rip her clothes from her body, raping her. And after they're done, they decide to use her for target practice. They start throwing full beer cans at her and they throw them so hard that it tears the flesh right to the bone. And then they urinate on her. Now comes the hanging. They find a rope, they tie a noose, Imagine the noose growing slowly tighter around her neck and with a sudden blinding jerk, she is pulled up into the air. Her legs and feet go kicking, but, but they don't find the ground. 
the hanging branch. The hanging branch is not strong enough. It snaps, and she falls back down to the earth. So they pick her up, toss her to the back of the truck, and they drive up to Foggy Creek Bridge. And they, and they pitch her over the edge. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl, her raped, beaten body, covered in their urine, soaked in her blood, left to die. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl. Now imagine she's white. The defense rests the honor. Thank you, performer, for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. Please proceed to the breakout room. Performer TES 1905 will arrive shortly. Participant 1905, please switch on your camera and microphone. The performer will be arriving shortly. Performer TES 1905, please switch on your microphone and camera. Performer TES 1102, please move to the breakout room. Thank you. All the best. You may proceed. Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Mad Hatter's Row. Not at first, perhaps, but you could keep it at half past one for as long as you like. Not since we quarreled last March, right before he went mad, you know. Ever since I've been frozen at six o'clock. Tita, tell me, Alice, would you fancy that? I know I would, I would indeed. Do you want to know what else I fancy? I fancy that you are God and I am Satan. And time has trapped 
the both of us here forever to speak of nonsense until the end of his immortal life of course you never fancied that and neither did i of course you are no deity and i no demon but perhaps if we fancy ourselves as such and time plays his part we could live as such here forever in our own personal hell arguing of nothing with our tongues in our cheeks and our eyes sunken in their sockets and maybe then the voices in my head would stop and then the voices in yours would halt too <laughs> kidding no voices <laughs> Tell me, Alice, would you like to start a family? Dom Mouse could be the priest, and Marsh in the corner, and I would make a lovely blushing bride. Don't you think? Time and I quarreled with great concert of the Queen of hearts and I had to sing. Thank you. Thank you performer for your performance. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performer 220TES2206 has arrived. Please switch on your microphone and camera. Hi, good afternoon. My extract will be from the show Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And I'm going to be acting as Will Smith. Enjoy. Hey, Uncle. Hey, Lou, what's up? Let's go. Ah. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. You too. Lou. You know, Uncle Phil, this ain't such a bad thing, you know? The slimmies of summer are coming to class next year. So, you know what I mean, Uncle? You know what I mean? Why should I be mad, Uncle Phil? At least he said goodbye this time, right? I just wish I hadn't wasted my stupid money buying this stupid present. You know, it ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? It ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom when daddy coming home. Who needs him? It ain't like he was there to teach me how to shoot my first basket. But I learned, didn't I, Uncle Phil? And I got pretty damn good at it too, didn't I? I went through my first date without him. I learned how to drive without him. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight. Without him, I had 14, 14 great birthdays without him. And he never even sent me a battle with him. I didn't need him then. And I don't need him now, Uncle Phil. You know what? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey and I have a whole bunch of kids. 
and be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that. Because in a damn thing, he could ever teach me on how to love my kids. Why don't you love me, man? Why do you love me? Thank you, performer, for your performance. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performer 14, PES 1409 will be arriving soon. Performer has arrived. Performer, please switch on your microphone and camera. Thank you. All the best. You may proceed. I will be. I'll be doing an extract from last time, from here, and I will be portraying the character last time. The students of Freakwood High. I'm writing this post to. The students of Freakwood High. As anyone with half a decent data plan would know, a recent post on this very website declared that I was. Gay. That I was gay. The delivery left something to decide, but the message is. I am gay. I am gay. For a long time, I've been bending over backwards trying to hide that fact. I had all these reasons that that it was unfair that only gay people had to come out. That I was sick of change. That. Truth is, I was terrified. Announcing who you are to the world is terrifying because what if the world doesn't like you? So I did whatever I could to keep my little secret. I hurt people. I hurt the best, most important people to me. I want them to know I'm sorry. I'm sorrier than I've ever been about anything in my life. 
and to everyone. I want everyone to know that I am done being terrified. I am done living in a world where I don't get to be who I want to be. I'm done living in a world where I don't get my own amazing love story. Disclaimer. This is about to get romantic as if. So anyone averse to pretentious feelings, please click over to the BuzzFeed quiz above or Resume that porn you were watching before you read this. This guy that I love, he once wrote, he felt like he was on a Ferris wheel. On top of the world one moment, but rock bottom the next. That's exactly how I feel right now. I couldn't ask for a much more understanding family. I couldn't ask for amazing friends. But without him, it all means nothing. So, guy that I love, After the play tonight, 10 o'clock, you know where I'll be. There's no pressure for you to show though. Just because I want to grant just the crap out of you and can't wait another second, doesn't mean that you have to be ready for all that. But I really hope you are because you deserve a great love story too. And I was sure as hell love to meet you. Love, Simon. Thank you, performer, for your, for your performance. Please move to the breakout room. Performer 2311 will be arriving shortly. TES2311 has arrived. Uh, this is a group performance. Uh, apologies, apologies. This is a solo performance. Uh, competitor, do proceed.
Competitor, you may proceed. All the best. It's me. Here I come. The great man himself. The master of the house. The wage earner. The one who makes it possible for all the rest of you to live so well. Notice me and pay all your respects. Well, my boy. Your father feels he's in for another great money-making day today at the garage. I've got a few little beauties. I'm going to flog to the idiots this morning. Where's my breakfast? What the heck's the matter with you, woman? Look at the mess you made on the carpet. What's wrong with my hair, for heaven's sake? What the blaze is I both talking about? I most certainly not have not dyed it. What do you mean I have dyed it? What's happened to it? Or is this some sort of a stupid joke? Get me a mirror. Don't just stand there shrieking at me. Get me a mirror. Oh my God. What's happened to me? I look terrible. I look just like you gone wrong. I can't go down to the garage and sell cars like this. How did it happen? How could it have happened? You mean I'm going to lose all my hair? What are you saying? I'm not a lavatory pan. I don't want to be disinfected. What shall I do? I can't go around looking like this forever. Get me an appointment with your hairdresser this instant for a hair dyeing job. They have to boot someone else off their list. Tell them it's an emergency. Thank you. Thank you, performer, for your performance. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performer T, uh, sorry, um, apologies. Performer T E S two three one two. You may perform as you are using the same account. You may stay back and perform. Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes. If the devil did desire to have a hand in the affairs of men, the devil's agents may be of flesh and blood. There are two questions waiting for us at the outset. The one is whether any crime has been committed at all. The second is, what was the crime and how was it committed? Have you turned the case over in your mind? It certainly has character of its own. There are points. The change in footprints, for example, what do you make of that? Ah, uh, he repeated what some fool had said at the inquest. Why should a man walk on tiptoe down the alley? He was running, Watson, running desperately, running for his life, 
running until he burst his heart and fell dead upon his face. There lies our problem. There are indications that the man was crazed with fear before ever he began to run. I am presuming that the cause of his fear came from across the moor. If that were so, and it seems most probable, only a man who had lost his wits would have run from the house instead of towards it. If the gypsy's evidence may be taken as true, he ran with cries for help in the direction where help was least likely to be. Then again, whom was he waiting for that night? And why did he wait for him in the U alley rather than in his own house? The man was elderly and infirm. We can understand his taking an evening stroll, but the ground was damp and the night inclement. Is it natural to wait for five, 10 minutes there as Dr. Mortimer <laughs> With more, with more power, sense than I should have given him credit for, deduced from the cigar ash. I think it quite unlikely that he waited at the mortgage. On the contrary, the evidence is that he avoided the mortgage. That night, he waited there. It was the night before he left for London. The thing takes shape, Watson. It becomes coherent. Thank you. Thank you, performer, for your performance. You may move to the breakout. Participant 25TES2513 will arrive shortly. Participant 2513, please switch on your audio and mic, audio and video. Thank you. Please let us know the extract and the movie you're performing from. All the best. You may proceed. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. I'll be performing as Don Vito Corleone from The Godfather, part one. You asked me for a favor. That I cannot do. We've known each other many years. But this is the first time you've come to me for counsel for help. I can't remember the last time you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee, even though my wife is godmother to your only child. But let's be frank here. You never wanted my friendship and uh, you were afraid to be in my debt. But I understand you found paradise in America. You had a good trade, made a good living. The police protected you and there were courts of law. You didn't need a friend of me. But now you come to me and you say, Don Corleone, give me justice. But you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me godfather. Instead, you come into my home on the day my daughter is to be married and you ask me to do murder for money. Bonacera. Sarah, what have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? Had you come to me in friendship, then the scum that ruined your daughter would be suffering this very day. And that by chance, if an honest man such as yourself were to make enemies, then they would be my enemies and they would fear you. Good. I accept your apology. Someday, 
and that day may never come. I call upon you to do a service for me, but until then, accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. Thank you. Thank you for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performer 2514 will arrive shortly. I repeat, Performer TES 2514 will arrive shortly. The perform has arrived. Performer, please switch on your microphone and audio. Sorry, audio and video. Hello. Thank you. All the best. You may proceed. Yes. Well, hello, sir. Let me introduce myself. I'm Bond, James Bond. Would you like anything to drink, sir? Yes. Reginald, could you get Mr. Francois de Kock here, whiskey on the rocks, and a lemon peel martini, shaken, not stirred for myself. Yeah, that would be it, thank you. Do go on, sir, have a drink. Can you talk to you why this fine afternoon, two fine gentlemen like us will be enjoying this pleasant drink? Wait, he didn't. All that got to you was a beard. I was away for six months, Mr. Decock. What do you expect? Someone's got to change. Pardon me, pardon me. Did you just call me slow? Mr. Decock, slow is not even in my vocabulary. But though, I can remember you asking me whether I think I know why we are here today. Well, it's a very simple answer, Mr. Decock. It is the same reason why you are here today, and that is to kill each other. Mr. Decock, come on, calm down, sit down. You know, I never miss. And don't worry, Mr. Decock, you have until I finish this pleasant drink to enjoy your life. Oh, one minute, sir, just pardon me. I have to answer this very important call. Hello, darling, hello. I'm very sorry, my bad. Late, ain't it? Yes, I'll be there very soon. Sorry, Mr. Decock. Love is hell of a hard day's work. What to do, Mr. Decock? I think death knocked on your door faster than it thought. See you in hell, Mr. Decock. Yes, people, nothing to worry about, nothing to stress too. It's just that he's dead. Thank you. Thank you, performer, for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performer TES 1815 will arrive shortly. Performer TES 1815 has arrived. Please switch on your audio and video. Performer TES 1815, please switch on your audio and video. Okay. 
Performer, please turn on your audio. Sorry, video. The performer is a. The, the performer is facing some technical difficulties. We will be moving on to the next performance. He will be brought in later. Thank you. From a TES one eight one five, are you having an issue? I repeat, are you having an issue? Performer, is there an issue? Performer. TES 2417 will arrive shortly. My the performers are having a bit of a technical difficulty, so we will be moving on to the duo performances. The first duo, TED 2003, will be arriving shortly.
the participant who just joined the meeting under the name Shanti's iPhone, please identify yourself immediately. Hello, I heard. Am I Am I heard now? I repeat the participant under the name Shanti's iPhone. Shanit's iPhone, I apologize. Please identify yourself immediately or we shall have to remove you as we have to continue. T A two four one seven. Performer two four T S two four one seven has arrived. Uh, please switch on your audio and video. All the best, you may proceed. Uh, I will be playing Catherine Murphy from The Accused. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paulson has told you that the testimony of Sarah Tobias is nothing. Sarah Tobias was raped. But that is nothing. She was cut and bruised and terrorized, but that is nothing. All of it happened in front of a howling crowd, but that is nothing. Well, it may be nothing to Mr. Paulson, but it is not nothing to Sarah Tobias, and I don't believe it is nothing to you. <laughs> Next. Mr. Paulson tried convincing you that Kenneth Joyce was the only person in that room who knew Sarah Tobias was being raped. The only one. Now you watched Kenneth Joyce, how did he strike you? Did he seem especially sensitive, especially observant? Did he seem so remarkable that you immediately said to yourselves, of course, this man, he would notice things other people just wouldn't. Do you really believe that Kenneth Joyce saw something those three men didn't see? In all the time, Sarah Tobias was being pinned on that pinball machine the others didn't know. Kenneth Joyce confessed to you that he watched a rape and did nothing. He told you everyone in that bar behaved badly. He was right. But no matter how immoral it may be, it is not the crime of criminal solicitation to silently watch a rape. It is not the crime of criminal solicitation to walk away from a rape. But it is the crime of criminal solicitation to induce or entreat or encourage or persuade another person to commit a rape. Hold her down, stick it to her, make her moan. These three men, they did worse than nothing. They cheered 
and they clapped and they rooted the other dog made sure that Sir Tobias was raped and raped and raped. Now tell me, is that nothing? Thank you perform for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. Please move to the breakout room. Performer TES1416, a solo performance. He will be arriving shortly. Thank you. Performer TES24. One seven has arrived. Please switch on your audio and microphone. Hold on, please do hold on. We need Kelly to move on. Apologies. Performer two four one seven who just performed. Move to the breakout room. Performer TES one four one six. All the best, you may proceed. I will be performing Franco Zeffirelli's 1967 film, The Taming of the Shrew, starring Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Patricio. It's burnt, and so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where's the dresser? Oh, yes, you will. Bring it from the dresser and serve it thus to me that love it not. There, take it, see. Bring that. <coughs> Oh. You needless soldiers in our men and chains. What do you grumble or be with you, friend? I don't need Kate's bird to fly away, and I expressly am forbidden to touch it, for it endangers Colin and Lung of Anger. Better to have it both of us with fast. These of our serves, our serves are choleric. Then it feeds with such over roast flesh and patience. Tomorrow it shall be mended. Then for this night we shall fast for company. Come, I will bring you to thy bridal chamber. Thus. <laughs> 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 Have I politically begot my race and tis my hope to end successfully? <laughs> my fountain now is sharp and passing empty, for till she stoops, she must not be full gorged, for then she never looks upon my lure. Another way I have to man my haggard is to make her come and know her keeper's call. <laughs> that is to watch her as we watch these kites. The plate and things. She ain't tell me to play him or none shall eat. Last night she slept on it. Nor tonight she shall dance with the meat from undeserved fall comes by and about the making of the bed. And here I'll bring the pillow, take the books to this way the top left another way. Aye. And I make this early on in ten. 
It's all with the tongues and the rather have gas. It's all night. And if she turns to not, I'll raise the stone and the clamor she burst in a way. This is a way for a wife of kind. And thus I'll curb her mad with her strong humor. He that knows better, thou frame of truth. Now let him speak. It is charity to show. Performer TES1416, thank you for your performance. Please proceed to the breakout. Perform a TES1815. Please switch on your audio and video. Have you fixed your problems or will you need more time? Uh, it's at that level. Uh, move uh, Adam Hardly to the this thing. Perform a TES1815 as you are having technical issues, please move to the breakout room so we can proceed. I repeat, TES1815, if you are having audio and video issues, please move to the breakout room so we can sort these issues out for you. Performer TE, now we shall be moving on to the duos and groups. Performer TED2204 will be arriving shortly. I repeat, performers TED2204 will be arriving shortly. Performance TED2204 have arrived. You may proceed with your performance. Please remember to switch on your audio and video first. Please switch on your videos. Performance TED2204, 
is there an issue no 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 issue you may switch on your cameras and proceed uh, we're doing an extract from money heist or the casa de papel uh, and the two characters me being rafael morio and visura being sergio marquin Thank you, participants. You may proceed. All the best. If I stay with you, if I'm choosing. This is Inspector Raquel Modio in charge of investigations. Who is this speaking? This is Inspector in charge of investigations. Who is this speaking? Inspector in charge, please report to who this is speaking. Hello. Please report to who this is speaking. Repeating once again, this is Inspector Raquel Modio in charge of investigations. Please state who this is. This is Raquel Mario calling the Royal Mint at this very second. Please state who this is. Is your partner with uh, having technical difficulties? Yes, I think so. Uh, just give us a second, please. Shall we move you back into the breakout room so you can figure this out and come back? Yeah, uh, please. Thank you. Thank you. Performer, performer TES1815. Please switch on your audio and video and begin your performance. Performer TES 1815. Um, yes. You may proceed. Please switch on your audio and video. Am I seen and done? Yes. All the best. Okay. In this scene, I'll be doing the movie The Imitation Game. I'll be portraying Benedict Cumberbatch's character, Alan Turing. In this scene, they break the Enigma code. <laughs> Mm. 
Why do you think your German counterpart has a girlfriend? No, 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 no. Tell me. But that's impossible. The Germans are instructed to use five random letters at the start of every message. In this case, Love just lost Germany the whole bloody war. What if Christopher doesn't have to go through all of the settings? What if he only has to search through the ones that produce words we already know will be in the message? Exactly. Well, that's it. Exactly. They send a weather report every day at 6 a.m. So that's, that's three words that we, we know will be in every 6 a.m. message. Uh, weather, obviously. And Heil bloody Hitler. You, the, the right hand wheel, set them to Peter, John, run watches through those letters, through the back scrambles. Yes. John, what was the last 6 a.m. message? L, H, W, A, Q, done. Come on, come on, Christopher. I need a new message, the latest intercept. E. O. T. Yes. M. Y. M. S. A. I. C. T. R. I S O A T R I. Hi, Hitler. Turns out that's the only German you need to know to break Enigma. End. Thank you, performer, for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. Please move to the breakout room. Uh, now we will be moving on to the group and do another group and do a performance. Now we have performance TEG2101. They will be arriving shortly.
Performance 2 DEG2101. Please switch on your audio. Participants of TEG2101, uh, please switch on your video and audio. Thank you very much. We will be performing an extract from the movie Pride and Prejudice. They're here, they're here, Mr. Bingley is here. Mr. Bingley! Everybody, behave naturally. Do not go cold. And the other one is well. Performance, I'm sorry. Your video is horizontal. Could you adjust that and start over? I apologize, performance. Your video is horizontal. You may start over. No worries. Take your time. You may start over. Uh, we have a small problem because we won't be able to get all our characters on the screen. Is that okay? Uh, if uh, you can continue with the story, yes, it's fine with us. But will we be will we be excused if that happens? Like we, we can't get all the characters at the same time, so like it'll be difficult to like the, the... Uh, you may appeal to the adjudicator. The adjudicator, they're having an issue. Could you please uh, listen uh, look into it? Could you repeat your question again? Yes, uh, we can't hold our uh, phone horizontally because then the screen shows it horizontally on your on your screen. But if we don't, okay. we can't get all our characters in one shot. Ah, okay. Then you may you you will have to do it the other way. We have we will adjust. Thank you. You may proceed. Apologies again. We will be performing an extract from the movie Pride and Prejudice. They're here, they're here, Mr. Bingley's here. Mr. Bingley! Everybody, we should actually do what they want to do. Do not look over there. What's his name? Oh, Mr. Darcy! Stop it, stop it! Oh my god! Oh lord! Everybody, behave naturally! Good to see you, Mr. Bingley. I'm here to inform you of my return to Netherfield Hall. But, Mr. Bingley, you promised to have dinner with us last winter, remember? At least three courses. Well, we must be going. Darcy? It's very nice to see you all again, Miss Elizabeth. Miss Bennett? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to walk in and she was going to say, she yeah, she did. <laughs> Um, is that? Wish me good luck. I know it's very unsure, but I would like to request the privilege of speaking to Miss Bennett. <laughs> Alone. Oh, everyone to the kitchen immediately. Except you, Jane dear. Good to see you again, Mr. Bindi. So soon. First, I would like to. I just want to tell you that. I've been the most unmitigated and comprehensive ass. Yes, yes, a thousand yes. Thank you, performers, for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. Uh, you may proceed to the breakout room. Next, we have another group to a performance, TED2204. Performers, please switch on your audio and video and begin your performance. Then uh, we will be performing an extract from Casa de Papel, translated into English, which is Mummy Host, a famous television series. Uh, we will be playing me acting as Jacqueline Morillo and my partner acting as Sergio Martino. If I stay with you, if I'm choosing wrong, I don't care at all. If I'm losing now, but I'm winning late, that's all I want. Hello. Good evening. Hello, this is Inspector Raquel Mondio in charge of investigations. Who is this speaking? The man in charge of the heist. So, how are your colleagues doing? For the moment, we don't have any casualties. I'm glad. Really, I'm glad. 
I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Yes, my apologies for this hideous metallic voice. But you must understand that I must protect my identity unless you're going to give me a helicopter to go to Brazil. Is that what you want? A helicopter? What I want right now is to negotiate with someone. Someone who doesn't waste our time, doesn't need to check with the inspector. Uh, superior intelligence or their mom to say yes soon. Then I suggest you speak with the president, but since he's kind of busy running the country right now, I'll just stand in for him, if you don't mind. Are there any other questions? Yes. What are you wearing? What? What are you wearing? Don't you think our clothes say a lot about our personalities? Look, I really have no problem answering you. But you need to be fully aware. This conversation is being heard by the members of the UDEV, the UDIV, the CNI, the head of the CGO, their liaison office, and a few more officers. In that case, we should introduce ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to meet you. Sorry that I can't say my name. But you can call me Professor. That's what everybody calls me. Well, that was a touching moment. Now tell me, what do you want? Time. To set things straight, listen to me, Inspector. We can come out in a few seconds, but understand that we must protect ourselves. So, so let's not move into any kind of interventions. Can I trust you? Yes, of course. But in order for me to trust you, you need to do something for me. Release the students, the minors. Things would be much easier. But Inspector, you still haven't told me what you're wearing yet. I have on a light blue suit with a blue shirt, uh, high heels, black boots, and I think that's enough for now. How about you? I picture you a lot better now. But Inspector, a woman's suit comes with some kind of skirt or a pair of pants. Though. So please be a bit more specific next time. I'll think about your request. As the former inspector in charge of the National Police Corps, over 100 hours into the robbery, and here I am. I was in charge of the investigation till I was forced to resign for failing. I was tasked with negotiating with the robbers. A few minutes ago, me, myself, I was revealed to the identity of the man of the heist, Sergio Martino. As a woman, as a woman who has been afraid about everything in her life, who finally trusted again and trusted someone who she thought knew how vulnerable she is has been fooling her from the start, like some 15 year old girl. He thinking that I was an easy target, what? Because I was an abused woman? Why didn't he just walk up, talk to me, ask for some information? No, none of that. He planted a bug on me. A bug disgracing me in front of the entire public, disgracing me in front of my daughter, my mother, disgracing me entire my in, in front of my entire family, almost causing me to lose my own daughter's custody. Yesterday, yesterday was so good. We talked about the future, the future 
the future god damn it who asks what kind of disturbed sociopathic person asks someone about the future together after doing such a crime after doing something this insidious to her this is injustice to the highest level and this should definitely be solved i was a sick child in a hospital bed not a single penny hospital in north america my father was thinking about robberies what would have you done he ended up giving his life away a shot dead right in front of the bank of spain right in front of the door of the bank of spain he gave away his dreams hopes everything for me this heist was my father's dream it was his masterpiece for years i've been preparing for this for years i've been looking into every plausible variable to make sure this heist becomes the perfect heist of the century this becomes a work of art something i can show to the public that we are actually people we are actually for them i fell in love with rakel the one rule i had to keep up with i broke it she hates me she despises me in her eyes i'm a criminal i'm the bad guy you've been taught to think that there's good and bad but the moment someone else is it it's all fine 2011 the european central bank printed 171 billion euros 171 billion which is just what we are doing only bigger 181 in 2012 145 in 2000 and 13 where did all this money go to to the bankers directly from the factories to the pockets of the rich did anyone call the european central bank a thief no liquidity injections they called it and they pulled it out of nowhere out of nowhere i'm doing a liquidity injection see this this is paper paper it's nothing i'm i'm doing this liquidity injection not for the bankers i'm doing it right here right now in the real economy with these bunch of losers which is what we are to to get away from all of it don't you want to escape who is to be blamed who is to be blamed stana sina mi sono alzato oh bella ciao bella ciao bella ciao 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 stamattina Mi sono alzato e ho trovato l'invaso. Oh partigiano, portami via. Oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. Partigiano, portami via. Che mi sento di morire. Thank you performers for your performance your performance is greatly appreciated please move to the breakout room thank you participants TEG 2403 will be arriving shortly
form as T E G two four zero three have arrived. Please switch on your camera and audio. Thank you. You may proceed. All the best. We are Frank and April Wheeler from the movie Revolutionary Road, and this is a duet, not a group. Okay, don't tell me. Let me guess. I made a disgusting spectacle of myself, right? And everything that man said was true. Is that what you were gonna say? Apparently, I don't have to. He's saying it for me. But you're wrong, April. Really? I'm wrong? Yes. Why am I wrong, Frank? Because that man is insane. He's freaking insane. Don't run away from me. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? No, do you know what it is? Yes, it's the inability to relate to another human being. It's the inability to love. The inability. The inability to... Oh, Frank, you really are a wonderful talker. If black could be made into white by talking, you would be the guy for the job. And now I'm crazy because I don't love you? Is that what you're trying to say? No, wrong. You're not crazy and you do love me. That's the point, April. But I don't. I hate you. You were just some boy I met at a party once who made me laugh. And now I loathe the sight of you. In fact, if you come any closer, if you touch me or anything, I think I'll scream. April, chill <laughs> Thank you, performance, for your performance. You may proceed to the breakout room. Performance TEG2102 will be arriving shortly. Performance, please switch on your cameras and microphones.
An extract from my I'm pleased to meet you all. We are also pleasing to be meeting you. I'm Brown. Oh no, you are committing a mistake. A mistake? Yes. You are not brown. We are brown. You are white. No, no. My name is Brown. I am your teacher. Ah, ah, ah you are professor. Yes. Would you all like to take your seats? Sit down. Ah. Nationality and occupation. Por favor, senor. Yes. It's a class I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. But I'm sure not, you're not trying to find a needle work class. Por favor. It doesn't matter. Have a seat. Por favor. Have a seat. Sit down. Ah. No, no, not here. Over there. Please sit down there. Uh, <laughs> right, I'll just go around the class and take down your names. Yes, what is your name? Maximilian Andrea Archimedes Fabandes. Okay, I'll just put it down as Max. And I'll take your Greek. That's right, from Athens. Good, what is your job? It's, you're a shepherd, you walk, work on a farm. No, 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 no farm. Sheep, big sheep, whoop, 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 sheep. Okay, sheep, conkers, conkers, oh, tankers. Okay, thank you. Yes, and you, what's your name? Giovanni Capello, Italian. Where do you work? I work in a restaurante, di Popoli. A waiter? No, not a waiter, a cucuta. A cucuta? Yes, a cucuta. See, I cook the ravioli, I cook the lasagna, I cook the pasta, I cook the everything. A chef? Oh. Okay. okay, thank you. And yes, what's your name? Haji, what is your name? Your name? Kya kaha? Me, Jeremy Brown. And you? Pata nahi ji, aap kya keha ra? Max. Juani, you, name, your name. Oh, you asking me a I'm going to get Good, good. Write your name. That's good. No, not good. No good. No Urdu? No Urdu. I need your name in English. Oh, what are you Ah, certificate of registration, Jamila Ranja, husband. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and yes, what's your name? I am. From Lahore. Okay. Where do you work? I am working at the moment, not anywhere at all. You're unemployed? Yes, please. Only once a week I am working. Okay. What do you do then? I am going to the unemployment unemployment exchange to be collecting my money. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> so I mean I get more money for when I am not working than when I am working. Okay. Before you discover this secret of eternal wealth, what did you do? Oh, I work at the Taj Mahal in Delhi. No, what do you mean? Time to destroy. Time to destroy. 
<laughs> a thousand apologies for my lateness, but you only put the point backwards. I think you have a more logical explanation. No, it is the absolute truth. I was thought to be taking a 27 omnibus, and I can't lie, but it went in the backward direction. You mean it went the other way around? That is the gist of what I am saying. Okay. You would like to sit next to Ali, your countryman? I cannot sit there. It is impossible. Why is it impossible? I am sick. Oh dear. I hope it's not contagious. I think you are you are feeling better. I do not comprehend the gist of your conversation. But then you said you were sick. Oh no, no. I was not referring to the physical state of mine. Okay. How do you feel about Roman Catholics? Oh. I treat them like my brother. Yes, go and sit next to Giovanni. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, you're here to learn English, not to start a holy war. And yes, what's your name? Ranjit Singh. From which country? Punjab. Good, what is your job? I am a very important member of the British underground. The underground what? Just the underground. Mind the nose! Oh, that's underground. Okay, thank you. And your name? Taro Nagasumi. My name is Taro. Japanese or representative of Bushado Electronics. Thank you. And finally, your name. What about what? What is your name? What your what? name. No me. Ah, no me. See. Juan Cervantes para te vi. No need to ask your nationality, you are, por favor, Spanish, por favor. What is your job? Por favor, trabajo. Ah, trabajo, tree lager. Tree lager. Tree lager, you mean you like trees? One gin tonic, two whiskey cobra, three lager. Ah, three lagers. Okay, ah. you work in a bar? Si, si, baba. Okay, yes, thank you. Well, Mr. Brown. Yes, about from one attempted murder and possibly a waste riot, I think we are coping reasonably well. Well, what I actually came here to talk about was the registration fee for the students. Now, it's five pounds per head, and I would really appreciate it if you would bring it to my office during our tea break. Right, I'll do that. Well, there is one thing we can certainly be grateful for. Sex won't be wearing his ugly head around here. I beg your pardon. Well, Mr. Brown, from a past experience, it's not race or religion that causes problems. It's usually the presence of some foreign beauty. Jealousies, intrigues, all that sort of things. Yes, well, looking at my class, I don't think we have to face those kind of stuff. <laughs> I have continents in English. I like countries Thank you, performers, for your performance. Your performance is greatly appreciated. That brings us to the end of the performances. Adjudicator, will you be needing some time to finalize the winners? That brings us to the end of the live stream. Thank you.